Hello everyone, my name is Zach Elgendorf and I'm a physical geographer, a geomorphologist, and educator. In this short lecture, we're going to be talking about sinuosity in fluvial systems, what it is, what it can tell us, and how we calculate it. So, let's dive in. Now, in a basic sense, sinuosity describes how curvy a river is. It's a ratio that's simply defined as the length along the channel against the length of the valley. However, as we can see with the GIF on the right, rivers don't like to stay put. They change rapidly, and the first thing we should consider is that sinuosity as a measurement is really only applicable to a snapshot in time relative to the state of the river that the valley and channel lengths were measured from. So let's look at an example. This is the Rio Mamor in Bolivia. Notice how windy and curvy the river is here. Now, here's the line that we would use to measure the valley length. In most alluvial rivers, this line is significantly straighter as it reflects the middle position of the surrounding valley walls. A fantastic introductory textbook folk, uh, called Fundamentals of Fluvial Geomorphology by Roe Charlton has this diagram to explain the various states of sinuosity. In this, sinuosity less than 1.1 is considered straight, between 1.1 and 1.5 is considered sinuous, and greater than 1.5 is considered meandering. Also note that we are often talking about a single channel system when we talk about sinuosity, though it is possible to consider the sinuosity of a multi-channel system as well. However, in these cases, we typically try to measure from the most dominant channel in the area, so or the one with the highest or greatest discharge. So these stream types typically exhibit low sinuosity. Now, according to a classic publication by Stan Shum in 1963, Sinuous streams are often characterized by low channel width to depth ratios, high silt and clay content in the bed and banks, and lower slopes than straight channels with comparable discharge. Jim also stated that discharge does not appear to greatly impact sinuosity, though the components of sediment load, be that suspended load, bed load, or a mix of the two, did appear to affect sinuosity. So let's first look at two different rivers and do some example calculations and really see how to understand these different types or different states of sinuosity. So the first is the Lena River of Russia on the left and the Minnesota River in the United States on the right. And they provide two really different but useful examples for us. The outline here shows the edges of the boundaries of those two river valleys. Notice that it doesn't seem like there's a whole lot of meandering about in the Lena River, which we'll find here in just a few seconds, is probably true. The dashed line represents the center line of the valleys. Notice the scale difference is the valley length of the Lena River is about 187 kilometers long. The valley length of the Minnesota River uh, in this example is only 12.3 kilometers long. However, this is a ratio, so ratios are unitless and this not necessarily a problem for us. Now, the blue line here is the center line of the channel. The Lena River we see is 188 kilometers long, while the Minnesota River is about 18.2. Now using the equation above, let's take a second to pause while you calculate the sinuosity of both rivers. Here we see both the center line and the uh, channel line. And did you calculate a sinuosity of about 1.01 for the Lena River? This falls under the straight bin in the example a few slides ago. How about the Minnesota River? Did you calculate about 1.48 uh, for the Minnesota? This falls right at the boundary of the sinuous and meandering bins. And with that, we've calculated sinuosity. It's just a simple ratio calculation. And in this video, we talked about how to calculate sinuosity, what it represented, and how we can use it to consider different states of a fluvial system. So if you're interested in this topic and want to learn more, the previously mentioned classic by Stan Shum, uh, Sinuosity of Alluvial Rivers on the Great Plains, is a great place to start. I've provided a link to this paper in the description below. I hope you enjoyed this video. Stay tuned for more, and I hope you have a wonderful day. Thank you.